Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and today we are checking out this bad boy here, which is the ASRock B650E Tai Chi. Now, this is a very desirable, fairly expensive motherboard for AMD's Socket AM5 and Ryzen 7000 series processors but you do get quite a bit for your money. There is a motherboard that sits above it, which has the X670 chipset, and a motherboard that actually sits below it as well that has the same chipset, but is called the Tai Chi Lite. So we're gonna be comparing the specifications of those three boards, inclu well, including this one, and uh, seeing whether or not this is the sweet spot or whether you should go for the cheaper Lite or the more expensive X670 model as well for your Ryzen 7000 series processor. And of course, don't forget that this motherboard will be compatible with future generations of Ryzen processors as well. So whether it's going to be called Ryzen 8000 or 9000, we don't know what it's going to be uh, actually called yet, the next generation Zen 5 processors, but they are due to launch later this year. This motherboard could be a bargain right now if you go for it because it will support those future processors. So we're going to be taking a look at the features that this board offers focusing on the stuff that it offers above and beyond your typical uh, more budget-focused motherboard, such as USB 4. We've got PCI Express 5 support here as well on both the PCI Express slots for your graphics card. Probably not that useful at the moment, but we do have a PCI, a PCI Express 5 compatible M.2 port, which we will be testing. We're going to be seeing how hot the VRMs get when they are pitched against the Ryzen 9 7950X with its 16 cores and come to some conclusions at the end, having looked at all of the other features as well. So, thanks to ASRock for sending over this motherboard. It's a very, very desirable one. I think it looks absolutely fantastic as well. I would be more than happy to have this in my PC, but how does it compare for the price and should you buy it? That's the conclusion that we're gonna to come to at the end. So, don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. Just helps punch me through the algorithm if you get engaged and do those things. And also, if you wanna subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notifications as well because you'll be notified when I upload new videos and I've got lots of cool stuff in the pipeline as well. So that's it from me. Thanks to ASRock. Let's crack on with the review. So here we are with the ASRock B650E Tai Chi then and we're just going to have a very quick run through of the features and they do a quick unboxing to see where you get in the box as well. So the first thing you'll probably want to familiarize yourself with is where to put your M.2 ports or SSDs and um, you can see under here we've got two PCI Express 4 M.2 slots, and uh, these are obviously backwards compatible with PCI Express 3 as well. No under PCB cooling and no tool free fittings here, either for the heatsink or the, uh, the SSD itself. You do get that with some of the other manufacturers out there, so that's maybe something that ASRock, ASRock wants to look at in the future. Um, but for now, it's a very large heatsink that will um, take you just a little bit longer to actually install your SSD. Over here, if you've got a PCI Express 5 SSD, then this is where you want it. Again, no tool-free fitting and no under PCB cooling, just a very large heatsink on top, which is kind of really all you need, to be honest. So this is where you want to have your PCI Express 5 SSD, perhaps so you've got a crucial T705 or T700. Um, that's where you want to have it. But again, this port is backwards compatible with previous generations, PCI Express 4 and PCI Express 3. So one very useful thing um, to note, if you do have your SSD in there, it means that you don't need to remove your graphics card in order to get at these ones. So obviously if your graphics card hangs down, which most of them do, um, if it's water cooled, again, you're gonna have to probably dismantle your water cooling system or drain it to be able to get the graphics card out, unless it's a very thin single slot water block. So just a, uh, a nice useful feature to have uh, ports in different locations. So I am just gonna remove the heat sinks because I don't wanna waste your time with the video just watching me screw them back on. So I'm gonna remove them for now. And so we can have a look at the, the rear panel and an absolutely insane number of type A USB ports here. So I don't think anybody is gonna come up short. I'm definitely not complaining about this having less than my minimum, which I consider to be about five. We've got more than double that here with 11 in total. So we have USB 3.2, uh, Gen 2 going on and all of these are either USB 3 or faster or USB 3.1 uh, Gen 1 as it's now known. So we also have a USB 4 port down here. So this is essentially compatible with Thunderbolt 4. It has a very, very uh, similar specification, very high, how, uh, high, uh, high power output and very high bandwidth. So the latest SSDs that are pushing well over a thousand megabytes a second will run absolutely fine on that port as will lots of other devices as well. So that's probably one of the main reasons you would buy this motherboard and it's certainly something that adds to the price tag as well. So we've got the usual audio, audio ports there, but just take note that you don't get the full six ports there. So if you're planning on connecting um, very elaborate speaker systems to this thing, um, you might 
find that you don't have enough ports. So we do have a, uh, a video output, which is useful because the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs do have a video output. Probably not what you're going to be, what you're going to be willing to use with this motherboard. I, I'd imagine most people are going to have a discrete graphics card, but it is useful for troubleshooting if you think your graphics card might be uh, might have failed or a port on the motherboard has failed. You can actually use this port to, um, to troubleshoot as well. Um, we do get 802.11 uh, AX Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi 6 we get on this motherboard as well with an antenna included in the box that we're going to look at in the moment. We get 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, obviously backwards compatible with 1, gigab one gigabit as well, and uh, pretty essential for AMD motherboards because I do find that they um, they sort of struggle to boot occasionally, especially if, you're, especially if you're overclocking, so we have a CMOS clear switch down there as well as a uh, USB BIOS flashback button, which you may need to use when it comes around to installing Ryzen six, uh, 9000 se uh, series Zen 5 CPUs if you get this motherboard off eBay or something um, and it hasn't been, it doesn't have the latest BIOS installed, you can use that button there to update the BIOS without a compatible CPU in the socket or without a CPU in the socket at all. So when it comes to the VRM's uh, power circuitry, we've got 24 plus 2 plus 1 power phases, so a total of 27 power phases with very, very, very large heat sinks down here. You can see just how massive these things are. They are absolutely crazy in terms of their size, so I don't think we're going to have any problems at all uh, with the VRM temperatures today. So I'm just going to do a very quick count up of the fan headers that we've got on this motherboard. So we've got one, two, three, nothing down here, but then a whole bunch down on the south end of the board. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like. So that's a, uh, a pretty decent number of um, fan headers. You're gonna be able to deal with an, an entire caseload of fans and probably radiators and all that kind of stuff as well. So um, that's pretty much all we need to go over with the uh, the top side of the PCB, except for the fact you obviously get a USB 3.2 Gen 1 header, USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, and we also get SATA ports as well, uh, which you would kind of expect if you want to transplant your hard disks. Loads of RGB headers and all that kind of stuff as well, and you obviously get the PCI Express 5 uh, PCIe slot up here as well. So that's pretty much it from the motherboard point of view. So we're just going to have a quick look in the box now and uh, just see what we get. Again, probably the most disappointing part of this motherboard is that you don't get a massive accessory box. I do like a large accessory box because it just means that you just get loads of cool features. You might get expansion cards or audio cards and all that kind of stuff. You just get your uh, typical uh, Wi-Fi aerial. You do get um, an expansion card for USB 2 ports. I have no idea why you need that given how many Type-A ports this thing has. Um, I think that's kind of a pointless inclusion uh, just to kind of fill the accessory box. Then you get your usual SATA connectors and you do get a little funky um, sort of Tai Chi ASRock uh, keycap if you have a um, mechanical keyboard that's compatible with, this, with those kind of things, of course. That is pretty much it in the accessory box. So that's the only reason I'm sort of a bit um, yeah, you obviously get the cable ties, ASRock, ASRock cable ties as well, but there's not that many in there. I'd, I'd probably want maybe six or uh, six or eight of those. I think you only get four in the box. So yeah, that's probably my most um, sort of annoying feature about this motherboard is that the accessory box isn't uh, as wow um, factoring as other motherboards you have out there. So um, other things that I'm not so keen on, um, I would have liked to have seen another M.2 port down here because I feel that the uh, the heatsink up here is great, but you need to remove your graphics card to actually get at those ports. So if you're adding in multiple M.2 SSDs on this motherboard, which is you know what a lot of people are doing these days, um, given that eight terabyte SSDs are very expensive, um, people are tending to double up with two terabytes and four terabytes um, just to get that extra super fast data. Um, that's just something I would like to have seen is maybe just one of those ports dropping down here or even having both of them down here or something like that. Um, another thing I find a little bit um, irritating is having the uh, the diagnostic LED down here and that kind of stuff. It just can prove a little bit difficult to see those in the case. I do like the fact that it has them though because a, a lot of motherboard manufacturers don't have these things anymore. And they are so useful having the diagnostic LED on an uh, on an AMD motherboard, especially uh, just because they tend to be a bit slow to boot up and a bit prone to um, hanging. Sometimes you just it's just nice to see 
uh, what the what your board is actually doing um, and obviously having a reset button and power button on there is always great for benchmarking and testing and uh, all that kind of stuff so that's pretty much it from the unboxing let's crack on with the review so first up we have the peak vrm temperature which at 41 degrees c was achieved after a 10 minute stress test in Cinebench, the multi-threaded test putting all of the CPU cores under load and that's an excellent result. Generally, I'd expect the uh, a very, very good board to be under 50 degrees C and that's exactly what we saw here. So the PCI Express 5 and not 2 temperature, not quite as impressive. The temperature with our crucial T705, which dishes out data at over 14,000 megabytes a second, was only a couple of degrees away from that thing throttling. So 78 degrees, not a great result here. And the heatsink isn't that large. And also the, uh, the underside of the SSD isn't cooled either, which you do get on the, um, the heatsink equipped version of the T705 and on lots of other motherboard, uh, motherboard manufacturers uh, M.2 heatsinks as well. So you would definitely want some active airflow flowing over that heatsink if you're gonna be using a PCI Express 5 SSD. Back to good results now then, and the audio performance of this board, and uh, we have a noise level of minus 111 dBA, dynamic range of 111 dBA, and a THD of 0.002. They are all excellent results for onboard audio, and these are similar results that you'll get to the X670 version of this board as well, because that uses the exact same audio codec and uh, technology. So you're likely gonna be getting um, much better audio quality on this board than you would with something like the uh, the Realtek um, ALC892 codec or something like that, something that's much older and probably equipped on a budget uh, motherboard. But if you wanna use this board for gaming or music, then you probably won't have any complaints and it's gonna be performing fairly close to a discrete sound card as well. Okay, so the final part of this video is just comparing the three ASRock Tai Chi boards that you can potentially own uh, for your Socket AM5 system. So the one that we're looking at today is the B650E Tai Chi, which retails for around $370. So here we can see the pricing at Newegg, and uh, we have the X670E Tai Chi, which retails for around 70 bucks or so. Uh, more at $430 and we have the Tai Chi Lite which has a pretty awesome price of $260 so it is over $100 less than the B650E Tai Chi. Now I'm going to say first off that while I love the looks of the two more expensive boards the B650E Tai Chi the one that we're looking at today and the X670E Tai Chi I cannot re recommend either of them over the Tai Chi Lite. The Tai Chi Lite is an absolute steal for what you're getting. For the simple reason, you are getting pretty much everything that you get with the much more expensive B650E Tai Chi. Now, that board, admittedly, as I just mentioned, does look awesome, but what it looks like is ASRock has used pretty much exactly the same PCB with exactly the same features, uh, but just slapped a, uh, a big heatsink on it that we can see here. So yeah, that looks great, as do uh, a lot of the other specifications. Um, we've got some bigger VRM heatsinks as well, but we have the exact same power circuitry, the two plus two, uh, tw sorry, 24 plus two plus one power phases on both boards. And that is just absolutely crazy to get that kind of level of VRMs on the a board of uh, of this price on the top with the Tai Chi light. What's more, we also get a PCI Express five, a PCI Express port. Not that useful as I mentioned, but you still get it. But you also get a uh, PCI Express five. M.2 port. So if you do want to go all out and get a crazy fast 14,000 megabytes a second uh, PCI Express uh, 5 SSD, you can house it on the Tai Chi Lite as well. So other things uh, that kind of put the nail in the coffin of the B650E Tai Chi is the fact that the cheaper board also has a USB 4 Type-C port. Um, so you've got fast charging there for your smartphone. You've got the extra bandwidth as well. You get exactly the same number of ports on the rear I.O. panel as well. These two are identical. So I can't honestly see any reason why you would go for the B650E Tai Chi unless you were willing to spend another 100, 120 bucks just for the better aesthetics. It does look gorgeous, I have to admit, but 
Is it worth the extra cash? Probably not. Um, the M.2 heatsink for the PCI Express 5 slot is maybe a little larger on the Tai Chi, but you're pro I would probably recommend that you have um, you know, a, a fan pointed at that heatsink or use an actively cooled heatsink for a PCI Express 5 SSD anyway, because even the B650E Tai Chi was getting a little warm for comfort. So honestly, I kind of expected today to come out recommending the B650E Tai Chi, um, but looking at the specifications, I just really can't justify that. There, there is literally a, um, a hair between them. It's absolutely crazy given the price difference. So whether or not ASRock has technically shot itself in the foot, I don't really know. I think it's kind of offered up the two more expensive boards to start with, Bissocket AM5. It's then stripped away, stripped away some of the aesthetics and sold the board at a much cheaper price. So this is the board that I would go for, the B650E Tai Chi Lite. And you can see a link to that board and all three of these boards in the description below. So that is uh, pretty much it from, he from me here today. Sadly, I can't recommend the board that I've reviewed unless you're absolutely sold on the aesthetics, which I, uh, I don't know, maybe. Um, but for me, I think the, uh, the best option for pretty much everyone out there is the far, far cheaper option in the form of the B650E Tai Chi Lite. So it's still an ASRock board. Hopefully they won't be too disappointed with this review. Um, I, all three of these boards are really, really good. I've looked at all of them. So um, I would thoroughly recommend the B650E Tai Chi Lite over the other two boards. So that's pretty much it from me here today. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Azrock for sending over the motherboard. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be back very, very soon.